Hey guys, this is Eckhart at Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. Just a quick one today because I wanted to highlight some really cool art in the Star Wars community that you guys may not already be familiar with. And I just wanted to sort of discuss it, give my own interpretation on it, and just give you guys a resource and something to look at if you want to see some really incredible Star Wars work. Of course, every single piece of art that I discuss in today's video will be featured down in the description in the order for which I mention. It. All right, so in 2016, Industrial Light and Magic, ILM, launched the ILM Art Challenge, which was a way to discover concept artists who may be able to work on Star Wars in the future. Now, of course, a lot of the people who submitted to that art challenge were already working with Star Wars or are now working with Star Wars, but there was also just a lot of incredible fan art. I'll link to the ILM Art Challenge page on ArtStation and you can browse all of the entries. But one thing that I just find really awesome is the total variety of style that we see at play here. There are also a variety of subjects covered with there being three phases of the challenge. There was the ride where artists were designing Star Wars vehicles. There was the moment and the job. Today I want to examine some of my favorite pieces of ship-based art, and they come from all of these categories, but of course, in particular, the ride. All right, so we're gonna start very, very big, and if you're a Star Wars fan who's perused Google Images, you've probably seen this one before. It's from Romeo de Scren, and shows basically the most massive Imperial ship that you can even imagine. Those little things that it's launching aren't shuttles, those are Imperial Star Destroyers, and of course, it also has a Death Star like super weapon as the base. I like the way that the front of the ship has to be cut away to allow for the super laser to shine through. It also kind of reminds me of some concept art we got for Star Destroyers in episode seven. But yeah, this ship would be absolutely enormous. This is like beyond even Dark Empire scale, 100 plus kilometers. Someone could do the math with the size of those Star Destroyers there. All in all though, really, really cool. All right, so this next image is by Bo Hao Wang, and I really like it because it presents Star Wars as if the ship design had followed a completely different aesthetic if Star Wars has been created maybe in the 2010s versus the 1970s. These massive vessels orbiting this rebel base almost look like something out of Halo or another modern sci-fi genre rather than Star Wars, and I've actually seen some people use that as criticism. But the great thing about these challenges is that they don't need to follow standard Star Wars convention. It's putting your own spin on the universe and creating something interesting. All right, the next pieces I wanted to highlight are from Roberto Robert, and I'm actually going to highlight two of their images because they're both very cool and very different. The first is the D-Wing, and of course this is a more Star Wars-like take on Star Wars ships compared to the previous entry that we looked at, and it reminds me a lot of more concept art from The Force Awakens for future vehicles, and I really love like this. It sort of melds aspects of the B-Wing with this sort of asymmetry, the extra wing, and the fact that it can obviously rotate with the single S-foil. Maybe like a Mandalorian ship. The second image, though, is called the Cloud Car Inspired Dreadnought. And yeah, this is basically what a beefier looking version of a ship used by Bespin Security would have looked like. And it's a very practical design. It looks just like an airspeeder rather than a spaceship. It's got the same sort of angles of a cloud car, but obviously much heavy armor. And of course, a very large turbo laser on the top. By the way, if you check Roberto's page, as is the case with most of the links here, you can find more behind the scenes imagery, full 3D models of the ships and more. This next image I just wanted to briefly touch on because it doesn't change anything about Star Wars, it just presents the universe in a breathtaking way. And this one was by Max Daba, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his last name incorrectly, and it's just an image of Star Destroyers looking quite menacing, but also impressive at sunset. You've probably also seen this one before, if you've spent any time looking at images for Star Wars ships, and it was actually one of ILM's favorites throughout the entire competition. Another ILM favorite was the shot of a departing Rebel fleet, and I like this one because, like some of the prior concept arts, it's sort of like Star Wars had it been just slightly different. In this one, which is by artist Fan Gao, we see more adherence to traditional Star Wars style when it comes to ships at least, but visually with colors and everything else, it's very, very different. 
It reminds me, like, as a what-if story of this is some version of the Rebel Alliance about to launch an attack on the Death Star, but they've got more ships, including what looks like to be a Republic-era Corvette, some Y-Wings, and more. All in all, very cool. Another more traditional one is from Renault Roche. This looks like a scene that could have taken place over the Battle of Jakku with an MC-80 Home 1 type cruiser crashing in to an Imperial Star Destroyer and what looks like to be some sort of suicide run of course with star fighters flittering around alongside of it and others watching from the ground. Getting back to the weirder though, we have probably one of my favorite entries in this entire competition and that is the Vertical Star Destroyer by Christoph Belinen. And again, apologies if I'm mispronouncing any names here, but this again takes the Star Destroyer in a completely different direction. And I mean, why wouldn't you have a Vertical Star Destroyer? I mean, it's space. There's no reason to prefer the ship being built in one direction over the other. All in all though, this is beautiful. I've used this one with credit a few times as thumbnail because it sort of portrays this idea of a more exotic side of the Star Wars universe because it does still seem very grounded in the universe but also alien in a way. When I look at this I think of like a strange faction in the unknown regions or something like that. It just really gets my mind going and makes me interested and I think that's the entire purpose of this competition. I also just like all of the detail in the Star Destroyer and if you check out his page you can see how it's similar to a traditional ISD. There's a shield bulb hidden in there which you may not see. But you'll have to follow the link because I can't show you everything over here. One common entry was the idea of ships dropping AT-ATs or other walkers onto the battlefield. This image by Joshua Kairos is probably my favorite version of this, partially because of the cool sort of action ground perspective we got here, but also the accompanying version from above. And it just made me think of how cool it would be for a Star Wars video game or something to give you the job of protecting this massive transport, dropping these AT-ATs onto the planet as rebel fighters are coming in to attack. It's also interesting that it seems to be using very large rotors as lift, which is certainly not something we usually see, but again, very cool, and there's no reason why in Star Wars, especially a franchise heavily inspired by World War II, why something like this wouldn't fit perfectly. All right, so I'm just gonna look at two more images now. The second to last one is one you may have actually seen recently on my channel because I used it as a thumbnail. This is another vertical star destroyer, this one by Dennis Lobder. Of course, it's very different than the prior one. It's sort of a carrier. The Star Destroyer in the foreground kind of betrays the massive scale of the things because if you look closely, you can actually see the scale of a Star Destroyer compared to it. And yeah, this thing is a behemoth. I used this as the thumbnail because it reminded me of something that a secret Imperial organization like Imperial Security, which I was talking about in the last video, would use as a base. Like this could be some sort of mobile ubiquitous base. That was my idea. All in all, though, an amazing, amazing vessel. Finally, we have a piece of concept art by Jan Rosowski showing a beautiful vessel clearly within the TIE fighter family or the TIE family but not a fighter approaching what looks like to be one of the Death Star's hangars. I've always loved the imagery of the Death Star ever since that shot of the map painting in Return of the Jedi where you can see all these small hangars and gun emplacements and something. It really just sort of captures my imagination in a way that only Star Wars can and everything about this image just does it for me. The vessel which looks again imperial enough but also weird enough that it's clearly new, the shot of the Death Star, the lighting, and if you actually go to John's art station page or Yon, I'm you know, apologies for names, you can see that he's really great at using lighting throughout his art pieces. So again, if you're interested in this piece, as is the case with all of the artists who are linked in the description, make sure to check them out. So I might talk about some of the art from the ILM challenge again in the future because there were literally thousands of entries. There's some really, really interesting and thought-provoking art. I always loved this one of Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, holding blasters up and returning fire to the Empire. There's another one where a rebel soldier has killed Darth Vader and can't even believe it. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know and I can look at more of my favorite entries from the art challenge. And these artists just deserve so much credit, so much cool work. I hope ILM does something else like this in the future. But until next time, guys, have a good one. Be safe and may the force be with you.